Man, ever I say, my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV, dear. I see them. Yopo. So, Sammy, let's start Look. off with passports. You are the ranking member on Foreign Affairs. Huh? Yes. And uh, we've been told that um, uh, there's a need for the increments uh, of passports. Apparently, the state has been subsidizing the cost of passports. And um, I was making a point um, earlier this week, I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday, I was making the point that, look, um, unlike maybe a voter ID card or a Ghana card, a passport is really uh, something that you need if you have plans of traveling or you are about to travel. It is not like a, a voter ID card which is issued to you in furtherance of your right to vote or a national ID card which you say that it is something that um, you are entitled to and should be given to you. But when it comes to passports, I mean, why should a state subsidize um, something like passports, especially in a regime where you have a Ghana card? I mean, proud to the Ghana card, maybe it could make uh, some sense. And I made the point that elsewhere, there are people who have lived all their lives and they do not have a passport because they've not had a need for a passport. If they don't have to travel, they will not go and get a, a, a passport. But I raise issues with the steep um, um, thing. But it appears that there is some division. Um, the, 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 the ranking member, um, the lawyer Piakubi, uh, the Honorable Piakubi, has addressed the media. The Deputy Foreign Minister has also spoken. And it appears that they disagree with your views on the passport. Are you, as, as the point you're making, uh, that government should continue subsidizing the cost of passports? Well, thank you for the opportunity, and let me extend uh, warm regards to our viewers. So it is important to emphasize that the whole notion that passports should be reserved for a certain elite category of Ghanaians is what I disagree with. Passports are not a privilege. Mm -hmm. Passports should not be reserved for the wealthy, for those who are rich or who belong to a certain class in society. I vehemently oppose that notion. That has been put at the center of this discussion. And we have to dispel that and demolish it with all the force we can master. There are thousands of students who on a yearly basis get admissions, full scholarship admissions. All they have to do is show up at an embassy with a passport. I would not classify those students as wealthy Ghanaians. Many of them actually get those scholarships because they have made a case that they are brilliant but needy. They are not in elite families who have the means to afford those scholarships. And that is why they have been awarded those scholarships. Those category of Ghanaians are not wealthy. Then you have those who, because of medical conditions, may have to be flown out. You and I know that there are so many medical conditions that we are still building capacity as a country. And there are times that it is advised that you seek experts medical attention outside. In those circumstances, I wouldn't say that uh, it's a luxury. Passports become a luxury commodity. As ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, there have been times that families have approached us that, look, a relative abroad is in some difficulty or the other. They need a relative to show up there. It could even be disease. Come process and have your body. <laughs> they are not wealthy. So this whole notion that suddenly passports have become such a rare, wealthy piece of document that should be reserved for a certain privileged few must be demolished. That's the first point I want to emphasize. Then the second point, which really 
just leaves me outraged. It's the way and manner the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration went about this. How did they the go about bad faith, <coughs> the undermining of Parliament, and particularly the Foreign Affairs Committee. That is why I am so livid about the approach. You don't treat Parliament, you don't treat your committee according to the standing orders of Parliament. The committee that has oversight, your first point of call is the Foreign Affairs Committee. I hold in my hands here the verbatim report of the proceedings of the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament, dated 12 December 2023. And this verbatim report becomes very, very crucial because during the week, I have been subjected to a barrage of attacks. Some have said that I supported this in secrecy at the committee level, behind the scenes. My public objection to this is hypocritical. I'm exhibiting double standards. I've been called all kinds of names. But the verbatim report, what transpired at the Foreign Affairs Committee, will settle this course. So, during the consideration of the estimates for the foreign ministry for the 2024 fiscal year, the, com- the, the ministry appeared before our committee. And, Doc, it was at this committee meeting on the 12th of December 2023 that the ministry raised this matter of increasing passport application fees for the first time. And I'm going to read, with your permission, extracts from this verbatim report. So this is Mr. Amprechum Sapon, Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, speaking. The, the Foreign Minister walked in later, when you read the, the transcripts, the verbatim report. He says, and I quote, The ministry is going to appear before Parliament on the issue of passport fees. And I hope that when the time comes, we will look at it. The supply of our passport is bulk press. They also supply same to Liberia. Liberia charges $40 for their biometric, and as we speak, it is under review. In Ghana, we pay about $8 per booklet. Mr. Chairman, indulge me because this is a key area. In the whole West African region, Ghana's passport is the cheapest at $7.76, followed by Liberia, $40. Benin is $50. Burkina Faso is $80. It goes on and on. Then I interject. This is Mr. Blackwell. Mr. Chairman, I want the Honorable Deputy Minister to guide me. All the countries he has listed, using are they using the same biometric and not chip embedded passport. This is very important because I have seen a lot of this generalization, the pick countries and just how much they are charging and they are comparing. But you have to compare like with like. We don't all use the same kind of passports. Some are ahead using chip embedded passports. We are really behind the world using biometric passports. That's what we are using in Ghana. So you can understand that ours will be cheaper. And this is the minister's response. The deputy minister, Honorable Aprichum, says, no. So they, they, these countries, they are comparing us with. They are not using the same passports. Then he continues. But that is why I said that Ghana and Liberia use the same supplier, which is bulk press. It is important because we are coming to members. Then the Honorable Dixon Adumako Kisi, a good friend, interjects and says, you will need his support. That's referring to the support of the NDC side. Then the Honorable Aprechub Sapon comes back. He says, he has already given his support. I have had about five meetings with him. Then Patrick Buama, who is short, says, oh, really? He has given his support. Then I come in. I said, Mr. Chairman, for the record, I told him to bring the proposal so we can assess it. I do not want colleagues to say that I have committed when we have not discussed this matter. Unquote. Then the chairman steps in. 
That's the honorable and the appear could be. Honorable members, the honorable deputy minister is seeking our support to move this process. Indeed, it cannot be said that the Ghanaian passport goes for eight dollars when we cannot break even and others are selling it at a higher price. If we want to continue giving passports to our citizens, they would have to pay commercial fees for it. A passport is not something everyone uses. You will need it when you want to use it. So I am sure the committee is not divided on this position. We will need to provide passports and they must attract commensurate fees so that our agency can continue to provide the service. If the agency is unable to provide the service, it will mean that not every applicant can get a passport. Then I come back as I'm about to conclude. So, Ukuja Tuablakwa comes here. I say, Mr. Chairman, I would like to appeal that we go step by step. At this point, we do not have a specific proposal before us. If we go ahead of ourselves and commit the committee, what if they bring $200 or $300 later? We can all appreciate the compelling case that the Deputy Minister has made. However, let us have their proposal. Are we going to have one quantum leap? Or will it be graduated? Let us have something before us. Then we can commit. So the chairman comes in and gives the final ruling. Mr. Chairman, speaking now, says, all right, this was something that we threw in. But let us prepare our minds to expect this. And when it comes, all of us should appreciate the problems we have and solve it. Director of Passports, kindly go on. So this is what transpired at the Foreign Affairs Committee. The matter was not concluded. The ministry agreed that they will go put together their proposals and come before us properly. Only for us to hear later that they have bypassed the Foreign Affairs Committee, taking advantage of the fees and charges ally and just smuggled it in there when the foreign affairs committee was waiting for their proposal doc do you know that this business of subsidy subsidy and you made reference to it do you know that as a ranking member of the foreign affairs committee i cannot vouch for this claim how because if you go through all the budget estimates line by line of the foreign ministry throughout the seven years i've served on the committee you will not see a single year that there is passport subsidy there. So I asked the question, where is the subsidy coming from? You see, inherent in our passport application fees structure is a certain cross-subsidy. So you see, the wealthy category of applicants who ask for premium service, VIP service, expedited service, who ask for bigger passports, the 48-page booklet, which is higher than the 32-page booklet which goes for every ordinary Ghanaian. They pay more, far more. And my understanding always, and I spoke to the Honorable Hanatete about this, the former foreign minister, is that that is what is used to subsidize the rest. So you're saying that, <clears throat> so you're saying that you have not seen... I haven't seen. ...anywhere in the budget of the... The Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Even when they meet you as a committee. Yes. To say that we this need is X amount of yes, money to subsidize, to subsidize. Yes. because maybe it costs us Y exactly. to pay for the passports and we get X exactly. in terms of the costing. Exactly. You've not seen it. Never seen it. It doesn't exist. Now, in making a case for this increment, did the ministry not make that case? No, so, apart from the comparison <coughs> with how yeah. much other countries pay, yeah. did they not do an analysis of how much it costs? So they didn't. So you see, they, they just raise this matter on the sidelines of the budget approval for the 2024 fiscal year. Mm -hmm. They were not prepared. That is why we concluded, if you look at the verbatim report, that they have to go and prepare and come back to us. That's a separate matter we must consider. And they agreed. That was the agreement. That they will come back so that they bring this analysis. Because I asked, if you read this verbatim report, I'm hearing subsidies for the first time. What is that figure? They can tell us. If you ask any Foreign Affairs Committee member now, today, how much bulk pack figure? Is it 10 million, 20 million, 100 million, 1 billion that government claims to be spending on subsidizing passports? Nobody can tell you. Let, let me find 
um, um, something out from you. And it's also good that we have an experienced MP here, mm -hmm. a former MP as well. Now, the fees and charges, yeah. government fees and charges, yeah. are approved by Parliament. Yes. So, for example, when we had the controversy with respect to the dialysis unit, mm -hmm. Kolebu made a case yes. that, look, this is how much we charge. This is how much it costs to get in uh, um, the, the, the dialysis. The, yes, yes. The, the dialysis consumables. Yes, yeah. the consumables. This is how much it costs. Yeah. And so if this is how much we're charging and this is how much it costs us, there is this gap. We either must adjust the price or somebody must pay for that difference. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, was the basis for asking for the increment in the fees mm -hmm. and, of course, the charges. Yeah. Now, I would expect that for every government agency or institution that is covered by these fees and charges, that makes a case to parliament for an increment, that there will be a justification. And that justification, one of the key things will be the issue of the cost as against the price, exactly. as a basis for. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And are you, are you saying that exactly. in the case of the passport, this has not been done? It's not been done. It's not been done. So how can Parliament approve? It's not it? been done. It's not, that is why we stood it down. This verbatim report is here. That is why at the Foreign Affairs Committee we stood this down. So how did they pass? And the chairman's ruling was that they should go and come back later. Because if you ask me today, as ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, how much is that sorted? I can't tell you. How much does it cost to print the passport? I can't tell you. And you know what is worse, Doc? For almost 10 years, Ghana has been preparing to introduce a cheap embedded passport. This current increment, is it for the existing biometric passports, which appears to be the case, which we are fading out? The foreign minister has announced that in six months, she is hoping that we will introduce the cheap embedded passports, which Ghana should have done many years ago. The Honorable Hannah Tete had almost concluded the process, but of course, procurement wranglings and all of that, and uh, this regime was set to, you know, you know, set all of us back. Now, will this new fee structure be reviewed? Or is this being done in anticipation? It's just a mess. So, on these matters, you must present all the facts. Be transparent. Let us know what the issues are. Come properly before us. But this business of, you know, exhibiting bad faith. You come to the Foreign Affairs Committee. The matter is stood down. We raise concerns. You notice that in my submission, I was even asking that if even after you brought us the financials, the analysis and all of that, and there has to be an increment. Will it be graduated? Or it will be a one-off in just one fell swoop? We asked all these questions. And it was clear that we are not there yet. Then, when you walk out of this committee, you go and take advantage of the fees and charges and just smuggle in these figures. And you see, the Honorable and the Apia Kubi is the only one who had the advantage of having sat at the Foreign Affairs Committee as chairman, and he's a member of subsidiary legislation. He should have brought into the attention of subsidiary legislation that this matter has not been properly discussed. The Foreign Affairs Committee has not delved into it. We are not convinced that a case has been made, and even if it should go up, by what quantums, how should the increment be? At a time that Ghanaians are faced with a cost of living crisis, unprecedented, for the first time, we are going through a domestic debt exchange program. It's never happened in our country's history. Is this a time that you should be just increasing passports with this model? You couldn't even consider a graduated approach. As we recommended, that even after you brought the financials and we have considered and we think that you've made a case, that should be the path forward. So, bad fit. The matter is not concluded. So, you see, the shabbiness and shadiness with which, you know, some public officials attend to their work 
is nauseating. It's unacceptable. And we all know that when these allies are laid, another matter that people have said, oh, okay, uh, so they dribbled the Foreign Affairs Committee, went to subsidiary legislation, and um, the airline was late. Why didn't you rise and stop it? Again, with all due respect, a certain lack of ignorance. When an airline is late, I, one man, can stand up and stop it. You need two thirds of members of parliament. That is the constitution. That is the law of the land. When an airline is late, it's a moving train. The only way you can stop it is to marshal two-thirds of MPs. NDC MPs are not two-thirds. So one, three, seven, one, three, seven. That's the composition of the House. So this business that, oh, it was late. We didn't see him standing up to stop it. You know, there should have been some Hercules rising up in the middle of the chamber, stopping this airline. It's not possible. So <laughs> this is a lot of hubris out there. Mm-hmm. And, and we need to cut all of that out. Look, the government may have a case that there is the need for some increments. It's not been done in a long time. They probably slept on the job and for more than seven years have not paid attention to passport application fees. But why punish the people for that? For your sloppiness and your, 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 your lack of industry and enterprise at your job. The other matter about the exchange rate. Why punish Ghanaians for your inability to manage the exchange rate? Why? So, um, other countries have a better exchange rate regime. You do a comparison and then you just come and slap it on Ghanaians. Are you not the ones who said you are better managers of the economy and that you understand the, the fundamentals really of the economy? It's about managing the exchange rate. We are waxing lyrical in opposition. So why punish Ghanaians because of your inability to manage the exchange rate? It doesn't make sense to me. So this whole approach has been bundled, it's been handled horribly. There's even no empathy. And if you listen to how ministers are talking, look, it's becoming too much. The insults, the condescension, the denigration. The last time the energy minister told us we can go and create our own timetable if we think that doing so is disturbing us. I mean, the cheek of it. How do you talk to I mean, sovereignty resides in the people? Without the people, you don't have political power. Now listen to all the foreign ministers. Oh, if uh, you can buy tickets, tickets are expensive. You can buy tickets, uh, you should be able to pay anything for passports. You don't talk to citizens like that when they are complaining. When they are saying that what you have done is excessive. You don't, you don't, you don't do that. Right. Others say that, oh, if, if you... Uh, passports are not compulsory. If, if you can't pay, stay away from it. I mean, don't talk like that. Don't talk like that. So, we at the Foreign Affairs Committee, particularly the NDC MPs, we are outraged. And when the House resumes, we'll be summoning the minister. Why do you exhibit such bad faith? The matter was not concluded. You said you were going to come back. That's what the verbatim report of 12 December 2023, that was the conclusion. You were going to come back before us to come with your financials. This so-called subsidy, what is the figure? Is it true? Then. We look at the numbers. All these countries you are comparing us with, they are not using the same passports. And then in printing, some of the countries they list, you know the population. So Benin, Togo, a lot of these countries are not even up to the size of Accra. You know that the more you print, the less are the costs and all of that. We know these things. As I conclude, the elephant in the room is also procurement. Do you know that, no, this whole passport printing business, we don't really open it up and let it be competitive. And that is at the bane of a lot of the costs, the, things that, mean, we have the, to, the, the things that we have to pay more for mm, in this country. We could be paying less if we do competitive tendering, if we allow the procurement process to be competitive. We don't want to talk about these things. Why should it be that, you know, a set, just one entity, this is reserved for them. It is their gig. 
we are carving out this country. And when we come to digitalization, you'll see some of these things. Carving out this country for certain business interests. Why? And then it is the ordinary Ghanaian who suffers. Why can't we open up the process? Let's have a competitive... Were these people not the ones who promised us that when they come, they will end the era of sole sourcing, the era of single sourcing? All these matters should be looked at. We were expecting that they will bring all of these matters, the full gamut of issues, holistically. Then we do the analysis. Look at procurement. If it's competitive, what do, what do we get from it? Certainly there will be more value for money. Competition will drive down prices. But there's no competition. So there are so many issues that we need to discuss about this matter. Mm. The matter is not properly brought to parliament. It has not been crystallized. Then you just smuggle it into, into an airline, knowing that once you lay the airline, 21 days, it matures. Mm. You present parliament with a fair accompli. Mm. You treat your committee shabbily. And you want us to support you, to cooperate with you. Mm. I, won't, I won't take this disrespect mm. as ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. All right. Been, Tana, we, we, we to, need your experience. I've been trying to understand uh, Samuel Kujato's uh, anger. Okay. I can't, I can't see what... You he, didn't get it at the tail end. No, no. I have, I, throughout his submission, I'm trying to see what he's talking about. I don't mm. get it. Mm. He says that people didn't... That's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They didn't come properly before Parliament. Mm. How is that possible? How, how did they get it through? I don't understand it. Even if you haven't well, been... You didn't hear me when I read the verbatim report once of again, the proceedings of the committee. No, no. So, where did they go? Mm. They went to subsidiary committee. Uh, legislation. legislation. That committee is actually the committee where the minority, some of Kujeto's colleagues, have a majority. Mm -hmm. That is the committee where the chairman is a member of the minority. Mm -hmm. They are in charge of subsidiary legislation. And that is where they went to. And the entire parliament, it, it, even the committee cannot approve or disapprove. It has to come to the entire parliament. So when you say the people didn't come properly before parliament, what are you talking about? When you say they, they, they've been, they've, they, they, what they do was shabby, uh, they've been not sitting and you know, using this term to describe the ministry because you said they didn't come properly before. Where did they go? Did they go to the Council of State? They went before Parliament. So parliament I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand this business of they've smuggled. How can the ministry smuggle something before Parliament? Parliament is chaired by a speaker who is a member of the minority. So this effort to denigrate the ministry and parliament, I don't understand it. Or you believe that it should come before your committee, the Foreign Affairs Committee. Even if it comes before the Foreign Affairs Committee, that committee is chaired by the member of the majority. Yes. And the, and the majority of the members of that committee are members of the majority. Mm -hmm. So I would think that for accountability purposes, the subsidiary legislation where the chairman is a member of the minority and the majority of the members on that committee come is a, is a, is, it's, it's, it's a committee that is also placed to consider these things. But it would eventually come before the entire house. In what form? The committee will make its recommendation. So like they present a report? Yes. Not the laying of an uh, ally? If, if it's laid before parliament, it goes to a committee. Mm -hmm. And if the committee doesn't have any objection, mm -hmm. the entire parliament will just let it go. Mm -hmm. Some of Kujato's beef, if I understand him, mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand, is that it should have come before the Foreign Affairs Committee. It came before us. They oh, brought yes. it. The minister. Before the Foreign Affairs yes. Committee. And, and then later, who and, took it to subsidiary? And it was not concluded. They were to come back okay. with the financials, Fine. the analysis, Fine. No and all of that. This and, let, of and later, who took it to subsidiary committee? Whilst we were waiting for them to come back to yes. us. Yes. Then we heard that they've gone to the subsidiary legislation. The ministry took it to the subsidiary legislation committee. Does the ministry have the leverage to go to the committee they like? Yeah, that's what is the, this is a mandate from the executive. So that's what they did. Sam, Samuel Kujato. Yes, that's what happened. Samuel Kujato. 
let's let's not fight. Does we are not, we are not fighting. Does the executive mm-hmm. have the leverage to choose some committee that they like in parliament? When, when it comes to allies, they are bringing fees and charges allies. They would be advised where to take it. So that's what they did. No, no. Can the executive say that as for this thing, we are taking it to this committee? That's what happened the in this case. The matters before parliament, I refer to committees by the speaker. This, no, this matter was not referred so, 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 to so, the so, severe just, legislation just, 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 hold a minute. just hold on a minute. When it comes to fees and charges, the subsidiary legislation committee is the one that is closed with jurisdiction. Is that yes. so? Yes. Okay, okay. Now, Sami is saying that mm-hmm. the Foreign Affairs Committee came before them yes. mm-hmm. on yes. a lot of issues. Now, this issue of the increment in passports then came up there. Mm-hmm. And at the committee level, they asked questions. Mm-hmm. And the promise was that they were going to get back to them yes. on those issues. Mm-hmm. And that the chair, from what he read, yeah. The chairman himself, that yes. was the conclusion yes. mm-hmm. that the ministry was going to come back to them with a justification yeah. for the increase. For the increase, for the increase. Okay. yes. So mm-hmm. it wasn't as if this meeting was specifically for the increase. Yeah. Yes. It was for, for other all things. kinds of issues. Yes. But the issue of the increase came up yes. mm-hmm. from the ministry itself. Mm-hmm. And then the members asked questions, including yourself. Yeah. And then the decision was that they should come back yeah. with. A justification mm. and then the committee will take a decision exactly yeah mm. this is what the chairman said now your point is that this comeback has mm. not happened yes mm-hmm. the justification has not happened as far mm-hmm. as the committee is concerned exactly but the increment in fees and charges which is handled by the subsidiary legislation mm. committee has happened yes they've gone there whether they made a justification or they've gone there yeah the committee has looked at it the committee has presented it to Parliament. Lady Ella. Yes, and then it's going to. Yes, after twenty-one days, it's yes. matured. Yes. Yes. Meanwhile, so, so, meanwhile, foreign affairs so committee legally, is still waiting. After, so legally and procedurally, the ministry may not have done wrong because they've gone mm-hmm. through the appropriate channel mm-hmm. for fees and charges. Mm-hmm. But okay. your your point is that your committee let's and yourself. Things, yes, let's do things properly. You've been shortchanged and exactly. undermined. Them. Yes, we've been undermined. Okay. Yes. And, and, that is, and that the is fact that point. you are being accused yes. of having sat there yes. in the, and the committee. Was yes, and some were saying that we even approved so, it secretly and that uh, we didn't ask these questions that we are asking so, publicly. Which, so, which are all so blatant we have, lies. We have established that the ministry did not smuggle anything. They were supposed they, to they, come they, back they, to they, the foreign This, this was supposed, 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 supposed. I don't understand it. Let supposed me, by who? This is the chairman's ruling on the matter. Do you want to the, get the chairman of the committee of the foreign affairs committee? Who, who took it to the subsidiary committee? The minister. The minister has the leverage to take a report or a, a business of the ministry to any committee they like. Is that what happens? The executive. When they bring anything to parliament, they decide that as for this matter, we are taking it. We, we, we brought appointments. As for this one, we are taking it to the committee on labor. No, but Nana, so, I, I, I don't, I don't get, Nana, I don't get you. Because your effort to say that there was the ministry had smuggled something. Are you telling and me that gone you, to some that committee they like? That is not what happens in parliament. Any reference to a committee is done by the speaker on the basis of. The and we have, we have established, yes, yes, we have established that the, when it comes to fees and charges, mm-hmm. it is this committee that handles it, and it's gone to that committee. Okay. So what's your problem? So, so Nana, are you not worried? <laughs> are you also not worried? <laughs> Nana, I'm so disappointed. There here. is a committee that has oversight over a ministry. Yeah. The ministry goes before the committee. Mm. The issue of the fees, intention, the fees. The intention mm-hmm. to increase the fees comes up. Mm-hmm. The committee asks for a justification. Mm-hmm. The ministry is unable to provide it at that point. Mm-hmm. The ruling of the, on the matter mm-hmm. by the chair, which was not opposed to by the ministry, mm-hmm. was that go come back and finish us with a justification. Mm-hmm. That has not been done. Mm-hmm. However, the um, application for the increment in fees and charges it's been made to parliament, it's gone to the relevant committee, it's mm-hmm. been approved. Mm-hmm. Are you not worried about what has happened at the Foreign Affairs Committee? 
there is absolutely no worry. Okay. It went before the appropriate committee of parliament. The ministry cannot choose a committee like we have established. It is that committee that is seized mm. with the responsibility of dealing with fees and charges. Mm -hmm. Not the Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. Not the Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. And indeed, when they went before, unless you want to say that that committee did a shoddy job. When they went before that committee, didn't they provide justification? I would be surprised if they, you went to that committee with, uh, to approve new fees and charges and they wouldn't ask you for justification. Mm. So I don't understand why Samuel Kujato says that because foreign affairs, he hasn't come to foreign affairs in the nation underhand. Shady, it shabby, and so. it was not concluded. Now, now, if your I'm argument saying, is anything to go by, why did the ministry present I, this I, to I, us? I'm, why did they make the proposal to us? And so when they presented it to you, who took the matter to subsidiary? So, the proper procedure has been followed. As far as fees and charges are concerned. How has that been followed? As far as fees and charges are concerned. Mm. This is your effort to beat the ministry and ascribe bad motives is so sad. Mm. It's unfortunate. You haven't been fair to the ministry. It is your analysis which now, is unfortunate no, no, and, and no, unfair. It is based on <laughs> facts. The committee that is seized with the responsibility dealt with it. Your oversight committee dealt with your it. oversight committee has ruled on the matter. You don't that, have that 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 come back. You agree. This is the honorable Amprechum speaking. It says can the I ministry is going I, to appear before parliament can, can on I, this issue. Can I finish? And the, I hope that when the time comes, you will give us your support. Okay. That now, is the, you see, the I, ministry's I think, response. One second. Mm. I think with mm. my little this is bad faith. In parliament. Mm. But on the part of who? The ministry. Because they took it to subsidiary. Yeah, why the rush? If you have nothing no, to hide, no, why the rush? No, because because they took it says it to, to the extent that why they the rush? promised the committee. Yes, that you will come back to us. But if they promise you, why, why, why the rush? What stops them from coming back? They will come back. After, but af are, after the fact, the action they took, after the the ally has it's matured, not the ministry, after the ally has not matured, the, can, can I? It's not the mean? ministry that took the action. The ministry cannot, on its own volition, go to subsidiary. Can they do that? That's what they did in this instance. No, can they do that? That is what if the record shows. The matter hasn't been referred. That's, that's what, what they did. So, with your experience in Parliament, that's, you are telling that's us, what they did. You are asking us to believe that the executive can bring something to parliament and take it to a committee they like. No, How is that possible? No, but the, the job description of every committee is clear-cut. Listen, yes. So if the executive yes. presents something about appointments, yes. it will be presented to parliament, but it is for the and appointments they, committee. Yes, and if they present something on fees and charges, mm. it will go to the fees and charges committee. Yes. Huh? Yes. You may have an interest in it because of your oversight. Yes. But the appropriate committee to deal with fees and charges is, is where it, it went to. So where is the bad faith? Where is all this no, the bad, bad faith, Nana, The issue of bad faith. That's mm -hmm. why when I tried to summarize the thing, what I said was that the ministry would have gone through what is legally the due process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fees and charges. It sends to parliament. It goes to uh, subsidiary legislation. They do it. Mm -hmm. But to the extent that the ministry itself went to raise it at the oversight committee. Mm -hmm. They were asked questions about it. Mm -hmm. They decided that they would come back. Mm -hmm. In fact, they went to raise that because they were soliciting the support of the oversight yeah. committee. Yeah. Yeah. And then the ruling at the committee level was that you come back with a justification. Yes. So that if we, we can then... Not to catch, yes. The Foreign Affairs Committee does not have the power to approve his sentence. Not, not for approval. No, 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 yes. Nobody has said that. So... so even when they come to you with justification or whatever, you still don't have the power. So the best thing that, and this is where the, the, the government of the matter is, mm. the best thing in my view mm. that a speaker would have done mm -hmm. was refer the matter to a joint committee. But well, that's not done. So, that's but, not done. But, so that the and charges is some... So it shouldn't go to foreign affairs. But mm -hmm. if foreign affairs, because of their oversight, and it's about uh, this thing, the speaker could say on this matter, let, let there be a joint committee. The speaker refers matters to joint committees, adult committees, and so on. But you don't blame the ministry 
of underhand dealing and shabbiness and all of that, when they've gone through the right procedure, so and, if the, and, the, and the matter that went to the uh, subsidiary, it's mm. not the ministry that went to subsidiary. So then if, if, hear, if we hear officials of the ministry <laughs> and <laughs> members of the majority side on the committee, mm. on the basis of Okujeto's objection, say that the issue came to committee, the committee secretly approved it. It was unanimously approved. The issue was which committee? Foreign Affairs Committee. Okay. Yeah, that's if what you they hear, who, who says so? Those that's what they were saying. Yeah. That that look what he's saying. He mm. could have he had the opportunity of raising it. Yes. The issue even came before the committee. The committee secretly approved it and yeah. all that. Yeah. I mean, and then he has this document. No. So the people who are saying so are mistaken. Because they imagine that the Foreign Affairs Committee is the committee that is seized with the responsibility. That's why when Nukujeto spoke, they but you are there. But it's not the Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm. It is the subsidiary legislation. Mm. And, and you see, what is funny about this matter is the subsidiary legislation committee mm. is a committee chaired by the NDC. Mm. The majority of the members of that committee so, if even I am a minister and I want something done for me, I would prefer a committee and I'm uh, uh, saying, I'm not going to be chaired by the NPP. And the Foreign Affairs Committee is chaired by the NPP. Yeah, the majority of them are chaired it, by the NPP. It doesn't approve. But, is it, so, let's, but you see, that's going to be my, my, yeah. my main point is that mm. I can be partial to the call that they increment from 100 CDs. 500 cities. That's 400% uh, or so. It's steep. 500, five times. So. Yeah, 500%. Mm -hmm. Coming uh, uh, at once. It's steep. And so, um, maybe if I had been graduated, it would have been easier on, for, the, on, uh, for the applicants. That would be fair. An increment of 500% in one soup, even if it's from two cities to four cities. <laughs> it's not, mm. you know, it's a hundred, it's in terms of percentage, yeah. it's huge. But what are we talking about? I'm talking about cost recovery. As a case, what made for that. Of what figure? Yes, yes. Sami, cost recovery of what figure? No, but Sami Okujeto, you, you, you said earlier that you don't even know. Yes. One second. You don't even know if there is a subsidy. It says oh, it's not seen, not seen in the yet. last seven years. But the years. fact that you haven't seen doesn't mean that there's no subsidy. So you can give it to us. Yeah, so you can ask for it we in the budget. We did. Yes. But, Randy, all you have to do is to interrogate the printer. Explain that. The printer who is printing the passport booklets. Why do you interrogate? This says it's 400 cities. You can bring him to, to your committee. It depends on because the, the ministry, the and, ministry and the contract the you have with him and how he was procured. The ministry is saying, no, you are interested in subsidy. Subsidy means that the, the service is being charged at below cost. Shouldn't it, start, then shouldn't it start from, for example, the ministry telling us that it cost us X amount to print a booklet mm -hmm. and we charge Y amount. Mm -hmm. So there is always this gap. Which we subsidize. But the ministry has said so. The ministry has said it costs 400 CDs to print a booklet. Mm -hmm. And we charge 100. So for every booklet that is given out, mm -hmm. there's a subsidy of 300 CDs. Where, where and, is and so how is that subsidy? Where, where is the evidence? How is it yes. And Sonia yes. Kujato is saying that yes. he's not aware of that. Subsidy. Yeah. And I'm saying that the ministry says that the printer charges 400 CDs. Mm. So you can just interrogate the printer, mm. bring your cost, and let's see if indeed you are charging 400 cities. Because the ministry is saying the booklet is 400 cities, and we are adding 100 cities for uh, uh, administration. I have said that 500 percent is cheap at the go. But, at the go. Mm. but you see, for the average passport applicant, you want to get your passport without hassle. Today, as we speak, unless there are some really powerful people like you, mm. 
like me, mm. who has some of your power, mm. and Samuel Kujeto, who's the standing uh, ranking member on uh, foreign, foreign affairs, affairs, very powerful. Mm. Yes. I'm not powerful. Otherwise, I the, av- I, I the can, ordinary. I can't even get a subsidy figure for, for passports. I'm not powerful, I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling for information. Please, please, please. Don't come and give me powers I don't have. <laughs> I'm being undermined and treated with contempt. Ah, please, record it. Yeah, you say I'm Samuel powerful. Kujia, don't be modest. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, please. Oh, yes, okay. Oh, Wonders please. happen. We are still in Easter. I have now, no power, clearly. Now, <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that. Getting your passport is fraught with so many difficulties. I remember the minister at Yokobotri going to the passport office too. Really was very upset. Mm. And when I saw the clip, I said, what is the minister talking about? Mm. When you have that difference, the Goro business will thrive. Mm. It's just common sense. If you don't close the gap and your people you are you are you you have you don't have the booklets because you are not recovering costs the black the goro market will thrive Mm. everywhere if you do that the goro market will thrive so when you are the cost of producing a passport is 450 cities let's say Mm. and you are charging a hundred cities you will not be able to generate money to buy the passport booklets and do all the administrative things to meet the demand. Mm. And when you happen so, what have you done? You have created a market for the goal. Mm. This is simple common sense. Mm. You create a market for the Goro business. Ask yourself, the Goro boys, who will give you a passport in one day if you pay them a thousand cities? Which people sign those passports? It's the same officials who will give you three months. And they are signing passports that go through in one day. It's the same people. So when I heard the minister expressing the anger, I'm, I'm like, but why won't she look at the signatures on those? Miss, miss, it's called misplaced aggression. W- one day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what Samuel Kujia is doing this morning. You know, <laughs> take the one day passports and look at the signatures. <laughs> signatures of people will be there and ask them how are you able to sign passports the application of which is just two days ask them your signatures are there they're go robots they don't sign their passports themselves so what you need is to recover the cost an essential public service which you know, I can understand government trying to do some subsidy you know and not passports. Of course, passport is not for the privilege, like Sami said. But, and Sami mentioned, you know, people will be sick and you need... That's the more reason why the system should be that you can get your passport on time. So, what we need to do... But and, and you, that, you believe that the price increment will lead to... That's what I'm, I'm saying. What we need to do, mm. Sami Okujeto and his collaborators, where they need to focus their energy... Mm is to ha- and this is where their oversight mm. will be useful to get the ministry to commit mm, mm. to a charter that will say you pay your 500 cities is it two days one week the applicant is given one week they get their passport in one week if that service charter fails you would have to hold the ministry or the passport office accountable mm. so that if the if the committee <coughs> with a powerful ranking member like him can have open their arms so that Ghanaians can has go been dribbled you are calling him powerful he says he's been what he's been dribbled and you are calling him powerful who dribbled <laughs> No, I sit there as a committee waiting for them he to has come it, back. He hasn't. He believes. So, so no. he can interrogate figures. No, no, no. He, he <laughs> believes he has been dribbled. Actually, you should, he, he you should, you should add Poso to the dribbling. <laughs> Chief, you are playing number four. As you should, as you should. Listen, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, come on, Chief. You are playing number four. Huh? The 
the attacker takes the ball to number three and dribbles number three. Yes. If you like. What has that got well, to do number four is weird. Then you say, oh, you should have brought <laughs> <laughs> You haven't been dribbled. If you believe that. The ball didn't pass your side. No, no. To, oh, to, but the ball came. To, to, I had the ball. And we all agreed that. Do you know? Do you, has blown the whistle. So. Do you know of the dummy pass? So, the, uh, Hold on. Then why I shall have like? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So, oh, who's your third dummy? You should watch more football and see how the, uh, 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 the, the message is added. You know, <laughs> So, Samuel Pietro has not been dribbled. He <laughs> believes that the ball should have come to him, and then the ball went to number three. But for me, I'm not all of this. Hey, let's speak for the applicant, the Ghanaian citizen. The turmoil they go through to get a passport. And recently, I mean, a close relative of mine wanted a passport. And she came and told me that a they said she should come back in three months. And she wanted my intervention. And of course, I had intended. I asked her, what I we said, oh yeah, we are going to this function. It's going to take place, so three months will be eight. Um, I had the intention to see what I could do. But I got distracted. And I think they went somewhere else. And they got it on time. Thousands of applicants are going through this. Because when you go and you pay your hundreds, they give you a time that the password will be ready. Isn't it? Three months. Four months. Maybe your, yours is a medical issue. It's a, it's a meeting that's going to take place in, in another three weeks. Your interest is that if they say pay 500 cities, you get your passport in one week. That becomes the charter that should be enforced. And if the Committee of, of Foreign Affairs, having oversight, can open their arms so citizens can go to the committee and say, this is my receipt, I paid my 500 cities, this is where I'm supposed to get my passport in one week, I didn't get it. Then all of us will support the committee in calling the passport office or the ministry and dealing with them. The interest of the public is to ensure that the hassle mm. is taken out. Mm. As well. And I'm saying, if you price this thing, unless, of course, we want to subject the pricing, I don't have a problem. But if we take the ministry's word and they are paying 400 and they are selling at 100, it's not going to be sustainable. The black market or the guru system will thrive. Mm. That's what is happening. That, that, so the interest now is to make sure that now that the ministry says that these are the realistic fees, we have to ensure that they live up to their mm. responsibility mm. to deliver the service, mm. the passport. So, so, so the Honorable Kofi Adams, MP for Buem, yeah, he sends this one. He says, until our last meeting, is he a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee? Mm. Kofi Adams, okay. He says, until, or is in uh, subsidiary legislation. He says, until our last meeting, the Chairman of Foreign Affairs Committee, Honorable Andy Apiakubi, was the ranking of the Subsidiary Legislation Committee. Currently, he is a member of the Subsidiary Legislation Committee. Considering his ruling on the matter, when it came before the Foreign Affairs Committee, that the ministry must come again, and his subsequent defense of the hike in passport fees, suggests the chair failed in getting his committee to play its oversight role. Usually... The chair of which one? The chair of Foreign Affairs. Foreign Affairs. No, no. He says that... Yeah. Until our last meeting, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, so this, the Kofi must be a member of subsidiary legislation. Says, yeah. Until our last meeting, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Honorable Andy Apiakubi, was the ranking of subsidiary legislation committee. Currently, he's a member of subsidiary legislation. Considering his ruling on the matter, when it came before the Foreign Affairs Committee, that the ministry must come again, and his subsequent defense of the hike in passport fees, suggests the chair failed in getting his committee to play its oversight role. Usually, before matters get to subsidiary legislation committee, the committee with oversight of the relevant ministry or agency is first seized with the matter. And when they are satisfied with the principles and reasoning, it gets laid and referred to the subsidiary legislation for consideration. Clearly, the relevant committee with oversight did not conclude its work. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Well, well, brilliant. No, no. What, what, is, what is Kofi Adams talking about? Mm. 
two it, things. It was getting to my mm. turn. Two things. Mm. If the committee with oversight has to deal with the matter first, and in this, I'm just taking, and then after that is referred to the, the committee for when it's fees and charges. Mm. And if the committee with oversight, which is foreign affairs, with the ranking member being the powerful Samuel Kujeto, mm. they haven't finished with the matter and the principles. Mm. Who referred it to subsidiary? Mm -hmm. Who referred it to subsidiary? Mm -hmm. Because the ministry on their own cannot go to subsidiary mm -hmm. without the reference. Mm -hmm. Number two, this business, he was talking about Andia Piakubi. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the matter that Andia Piakubi read, raised at the Foreign Affairs Committee? The justification. Yes, that, it, that the ministry should come so back to the committee. Yes. When they went to subsidiary, didn't they offer justification? No. It from, means, from it what we have got it. Even me sitting outside parliament, I have heard their justification that a booklet costs 400 cities. Me sitting outside, I've heard it. I guess the point Kofi is making is that to the extent that the chairman made that ruling yeah. at the Foreign Affairs Committee and he sits on subsidiary legislation, mm -hmm. And the ministry had not come back to the, the yeah. oversight committee. Yeah. He should yeah. have told, that that the he should have told them that, look, yeah. when you came before the oversight, yeah. this was the decision. You were supposed to come well, back to your justice. Uh, you uh, didn't uh, do that. Once Apia Kubi is not here. Oh, yes. So yes. We are just yeah. looking. But yes, I'm yes, saying yes. that Apia Kubi, as chairman of foreign affairs, mm. he asked for justification. He went to, sub he's also a member of subsidiary. And, yes. I, I, and I'm sure. There are a few more members who are cross members of this committee. Mm. He will not be only the only one. He will be like two or three or four. I think he's the only one. one. The Foreign Affairs oh. Committee is the only one there. In, in, in the, in but, but he's there in a very big way because he's chairman of Foreign Affairs, the Oversight mm. Committee. So if there was any uh, lack of information or whatever, he would have brought it up at the subsidiary committee. But from what you, have, you yourself have told us, what you wanted was justification. And when mm -hmm. the ministry went before the subsidiary, they offered justification. In fact, it would be amiss on the part of the subsidiary affairs, subsidiary legislation committee, chaired by the NDC, majority members of the NDC, mm -hmm. not to ask for justification. All right, okay. So, so, so let's just wrap up on this one. We yes. need to take a break here. Yeah. yeah, so very quickly. Let me emphasize that in this country, we like to make simple governance matters look like witchcraft. That's what you are doing. That's what Dana Kumia is doing. Nemo. <laughs> look, what, 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 what will... I'm making a what, 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 please, please, can I... Yeah. What, what will be amiss? What will go wrong uh -huh. if your oversight committee has ruled Come back to us. Bring your justification. Don't you think that if you had done that before going to subsidiary legislation, even the policy credibility crisis you are having today will have been avoided? The mistrust. And you see, when you are in the governance space, it's, well, not, only, the, it's, not, it's the, only about you and your opponent. I don't understand. What is that? You don't? But what is that? This whole policy to increase the passport application fees. Yeah. It lacks credibility. You have not got the public and, behind and, you. And if you are coming there is, for public, public uh, outreach, uh, one please, can I, when you are speaking, please that, write, that, it, that, down. write it down. Question. Yeah, you write it down, please. <laughs> you should please, you keep that, doing that, that and you that derail my saying, thoughts. No, no, please, no, I, I'll, 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 I'll give you I'm space. I'm sorry, I derail your thoughts. So, mm. let me write it down. If you had done that, mm. which is best practice, that is what good governance dictates. Mm. That's what happens elsewhere. All these democracies we admire, because they respect structures, respect institutions, respect the people. If you had come back, brought your justification, brought your financials, this claim of subsidies, you brought evidence. Nana says he's sitting outside, he has heard. You just heard that oh, it costs us uh, uh, 400, 400, but we are. Where is the evidence? Has, has Nana, has he seen any evidence of anything? Doc, do you know that in this discussion we are having, all these claims are fallacious? Why? Because the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has signed a contract mm -hmm. with Bob Press mm -hmm. many years ago. It is that contract that they are applying. Which year was this? 
It is that contract. No, do you remember which year? I, I, I don't have the contract here, so I don't want to get it wrong. But many years ago. And they themselves said when they came to us, mm -hmm. I remember the earlier quotation. Mm -hmm. They said that, and they said that uh, Amprechum said that Bad Press is is the one, is it the supplier of our password is Bad Press, mm -hmm. and they supply same to Liberia. Mm -hmm. Is here, so it is not as if they print, they go and print at current price. But is the is the contract that is contract that, two the, two things? Let yes. me ask two questions. Is the is Parliament? Mm -hmm. And here includes the oversight committee. Yeah. Parliament sees with a copy of that contract. No. Two, is, is a copy of that contract on the PPA website? No, I checked. It's not, it's okay. not there. And, uh, and it didn't come to us too for, okay. for, for approval. Because okay. it's, it's, they didn't need it's to. done. It's, they don't yeah, need they didn't to because need to it's, it's not an international yes, yes. financial agreement. Yeah. yeah. So you have a contract already. So this business, they are talking as if. When, they, when you apply for passport, then they go and print at the current market maybe, rate. Maybe, maybe. That is not because what happens. we have not interrogated a contract, we also don't know whether there are some terms in the contract that I make mean, for forex losses and adjustments and all that. We don't know. Yes, we don't know. So, yes. so that is why we are saying that all of these matters, you come and lay them. Then you say you get a bargain. Let me ask you a Look, question. there have been instances where you even get bipartisan support. You even have More. NDC MPs who will even be making the case for you. So let me ask this but question. But you keep asking let me ask this question. Something, make... something has come up, and I want yeah. to ask a question mm -hmm. related to that as we wind up on this. Yeah. Now, where the standing orders mm -hmm. does not provide, is not explicit on an issue, what happens? Is the speaker empowered to yes, give under, directives? Yes, under the standing orders. Okay. Is, this the, is the speaker who must? This is why I'm asking the yeah. question. If I read what Honorable mm -hmm. Kofi Adam said yeah. and the discussion here, yeah. Yeah, and I'm told that the fees and charges you have like a, yes, a huge a, across many sectors. Yes, that that yeah. is brought. Yeah. Now, shouldn't the standard practice then be that all agencies, the request, yeah. and justification must go before the relevant committee, and then the relevant committee must present a report to the, um, the subsidiary, subsidiary legislation. legislation. The subsidiary legislation, if it so wishes, can then invite those agencies or institutions to come before it yeah. before this approval moving is forward this should be this should be this should be considered and actually uh, if you like legislated because as Kofi Adams indicated that really has been the convention and normally people are subsidiary legislation will always assume that that has been done you know if they have i think the only um, if you like uh, slip in this whole matter this whole development if our colleagues there had called us those of us who were foreign affairs committee. Maybe they would have assumed you know, that. I think they just yes. assumed that once it's come there, the foreign affairs committee has cleared it. Because mm. as Kofi Adam said, normally that's what you will expect. Mm. You know, so let's be so clear. The, let's be clear. Mm. This matter was not handled properly. Mm. They've exhibited but bad by faith who? by the ministry and by government. This matter, I'm sure it went to cabinet, the president, how they went about it. You see, as we speak now, all of these claims of subsidy. How is that subsidy paid? Because if you go to the entire budget, all these years... But you have told us how it's paid. You've told us that there's subsidization. Good. So, 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 that, so there ought to be so, further interrogation. So, so, so you cannot then say that, oh, we are spending tax... Well, if you listen to the Honorable who appeared could be at his press conference, he said, why are 80% paying taxes to subsidize some rich 20% who go for passports? Mm. Well, let's see. Okay. Well, All right. You know, no. So, 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 you see, simple matters show good faith. Mm. You go to your oversight committee. They say, come back, come back. You know, lay down all the facts. Get a buy-in. Then we, if we can even discuss how we do the increment, graduated. You know, then you, then you see. Or, or, that, that, that or is maybe what, the facts presented yeah, could, yes, even, could even, yes, could even, for you know, could even let say you that, support that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And the All facts right. could even say that. Look, we may even have to go beyond this and when when chip year, embedded budget. passports come right. in and all of that. Okay. Then, then there's no secrecy. Right. There's transparency. It doesn't show that you have anything to add. Okay. Finally, finally, let me demolish this Nana Komiya theory that Goro boys. <laughs> Uh, are going to vanish because of these increments. It won't happen. What drives the Goro market mm. is the lack of efficiency. In all of this discussion, they are only interested in taking more money. 
they haven't told us what measures they are going to put in place to remove the bottlenecks. So he says, call them and establish a charter with them. That Go, you can hold the, them responsible the, as oversight. Goroboism mm. will continue to thrive if there is a backlog. As we speak, there are about 7,000 passports in the backlog. The last time we summoned the director of passports who appeared before us. Mm. As long as that backlog remains. And what was the reason he gave for the backlog? And they said their printer broke down. Now the World Bank, they made an appeal to the World Bank. World Bank donated a giant printer to them, but they are waiting for a software. The, the passport office's printer? Yes. Not the... No, passport office. Okay. Passport office, okay. yeah. And um, the World Bank has donated a printer to them, but they are waiting for some software. So it, it comes with some unique software. If you don't address these issues, your guru boys will still be there. All right. So, so it has nothing really. Maybe the hundred cities on top of the four hundred will help that. Yeah. I mean, that. So okay. look, let's let's. Then, I, then let's, in a minute, let's. Yeah. We are in a scientific me, environment. I've been given a minute. mature democracy. Let's do things properly. All right. Nana. What is this mess? Nana. Now, in a minute, yeah. the guru boys, mm. 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 they are there. Sami Okujeto says they are there because inefficiency. Inefficiency. So but look. And what is the reason for the inefficiency? They say they are under recovery. So when their printers break down, they can't repair. The facts don't support Now, mm. you have given them what they are asking for. Mm. So now they are no more under recovery. We haven't given them anything. I'm not I'm part of that. <laughs> I'm so not part Parliament of has. Of Parliament has. I'm not part you of are, that. You have no reserve don't, as MP. So. Don't add me to it. <laughs> Was there a dissenting vote in Parliament? No. There was no, there was no vote, actually. When that, an airline is late, do we that, vote on airlines? That's when one day is matured. Do we vote on airlines? You no, no. experience did, did, you, did you talk against it? Do we talk on because, airlines? Because, listen. Do we talk on airlines? Listen, listen. No. Let's stop misinforming no. the two thirds, two thirds. Airline is just late. It ah. matures after 21 days. That's all. There's no debate. There's oh, no it's, vote. It's automatic. Yes. Matured. Automatic maturity. Yes, true. Ah, that's, why that, parliament, that's why Parliament has introduced the pre, the pre late, late, yes, to deal with some of yes. the issues. Where does the two third vote come in? That's when you want to stop yes. the so maturity. Saying, yes. So did you canvass for the stoppage? Uh, the, do, do I have two thirds? No, no. But did you canvass for it? How do uh, you get it if you don't canvass for it? <laughs> How do you get it? Uh, two thirds? Please, please, please. But the, the, the committee that approved the You, you keep changing yeah. first. Did you say anything? The, 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 did you vote? Is, then is now, it, is now it, it's canvas. Can After canvas, where are we can going I, to? Can Nana speak small? No, I mean, because Listen, yeah. Nana is all over the place. You, you, can, know, you can negate by two thirds. Okay. How do you get a two thirds? By advocating for it. Uh. Did you advocate for it? Because what the record will show was that it passed parliament. There was no. <sighs> This, no voice this, against this, this. And in fact, the committee, where the NDC has a majority, there was no dissenting voice. Mm. The right. NDC has a majority and the chairmanship of that committee. Okay. Are you saying that those members of the committee, they are not patriotic like you? Maybe that didn't come to their attention. These now, details, yeah. come to their attention. So this business of the group, which me is the main issue. Mm. Now that you've given them the money, the money mm. to recover their cost and make a margin, there should be no excuse mm. for inefficiency. Mm. So, if you pay your 500, you're supposed to get your passport in one week. You have to get your passport in one because now you have the money. Right. If they fail, you should hold them accountable. Mm. That is where your oversight will be useful. Mm. Now, this some of tries to give the impression that if the matter had been dealt with by a foreign affairs committee, mm. there will be no public outcry. How is that? How is that? And you have more credibility. The, the you public, have legitimacy. So when it goes to you subsidiary, the then, so when it goes to subsidiary, then there's no credibility. There's no legitimacy. No, what did they send to subsidiary? What, what kind of no strange fact, things? No, no. So, so there's no subsidi- justification. So the subsidi- the subsidiary committee, which is chaired by a member of your party, cannot do their work to foster credibility. But that's what you are saying. You are saying that if we had no, your own way. You are over. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't listen to what Kofi Annan said. They assume that this has been done at the parent oversight committee. But if it had been done, didn't they also ask for justification? And if it had been done, did you give them a report that had been done? Why would they assume so? And if the procedure is that you go through the 
uh, Kofi Adams, uh, you go through your oversight committee. Who, and, and if they hadn't done that or completed that process, who referred the matter to the subsidiary committee? Mm. So this business right. that you are coming to okay. say there, so it's difficult to understand. So we, 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 yes. I'm happy, they say that the company is book pressed. Yes. I'm happy that the Ghanaian company. <laughs> many They've times, been doing it for years. Many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, for many years. For years. <laughs> things, yeah. It printed abroad and all of that. I'm happy that it's a Ghanaian company. Mm. And Bog Press, of course, is a reputable company. Mm. And I'm happy that they are even printing for Liberia and mm. so on. This is the way we should be going. Mm. But, uh, but I'll be happier with a competitive yeah. arrangement. Mm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so that we drive down prices. Go, go and ask for the contract and then check All right. Out okay. So we'll take a break. When we return. I not Now, so far, so good. Say, open online portal, a work Ghana. Ah, Nipa share, Nipa follow, Nipa comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I have TV.